What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, we're back with a brand new edition of My Damn Thoughts, where we're going to break down the new WWE Elite Greatest Hits Series 2 series that we have in front of us right here, man. I remember back when Greatest Hits Series 1 was revealed, and we were super excited for every wave coming after that, and ever since we saw this one in full fruition, I don't know where people's heads are at. You know, how are you guys feeling on this? I would love to know down in the comment section below. Very controversial set amongst the current WWE action figure landscape, I think. I think a lot of people either hate this line or really enjoy this line, but I feel like more, more than not, you probably like this line, I'd say, in entirety. But... There are some people out there that say F this line, Brad. So, I don't know. Which which side are you on? Are you on the F this one, or are you all aboard the hype train for the Greatest Hits wave? I'm kind of in the middle. I see both sides of it. You know, it's a little... I, I'm a little nuanced on the subject. I, I think that there are both sides. Very valid opinions on both sides. And so, I can I can see where you're going from. But today, man, we're going to break down all the different categories in My Damn Thoughts. If you guys are unaware about My Damn Thoughts, basically, we have a, a bunch of categories here about a set that we typically break down, whether it be a WWE Elite set, an Unrivaled set, and we're not going to do this very AEW Unrivaled 12. If you guys want to check out the full set review from yesterday, uploaded it very late last night, so definitely go check that out. We ranked that set in that video. We did all those things, so today, man, we're diving into Elite Greatest Hits, series number two from Mattel, and we're starting off with my first thoughts on this entire wave, and my first thoughts were eh. And most of that comes from just the excitement level was just kind of mid. I thought that some of the selections here, like Blue Tea stuff, didn't think it really needed to be here. This DDP specifically, didn't really think it needed to be here. This Seth Rollins failed to meet expectations. It is, is it my fault for setting expectations? Absolutely, Brad. But at the same time, heavily disappointed in the Seth Rollins. But we do have some bangers in this set. Featuring the hardcore, one of the rarest WWE elites at the uh, time before this Greatest Hits figure was the Harley Race figure. This HBK was a great addition. I think the Hall of Champions Taker was a solid addition. So we're, it, it was a very mid excitement level. I was halfway. Three of them I wasn't that hyped for. The other three I was very hyped for. So that is my stance there. Next we move into who I think the shelf warmer will be. And I think that's going to come down to two different guys. And those two different guys is either going to be DDP or Batista. And I think this one's tough, man. I don't think it's one of those that's just, you know, usually in these elite sets, it's like, oh yeah, bam, it's automatically this one because, you know, and I have like A, B, C, or D bullet points to hit and I talk about it. In this one, I really don't. I, I, I mean, like, I could see none of these shelf warming. I really could. I mean, you might could argue Rollins, but I think when people see a Seth Rollins on the shelf, they effing buy it. And being that throwback, it comes with a briefcase, it comes with a championship. People are not leaving that on the pegs. It's just not going to happen. So I went with DDP and Blutista. But this DDP was highly sought after, so I guess, I, I don't know, I, a lot of people missed out on this figure, so I'm going to say Blue Tista. I think people may have already had it from the past. It's not your go-to Batista look. It's in blue gear, like Blue Tista. Like, who, do, are they going to want this, man? How many people, like I said in our review of this figure, how many effing people were lining out the door for a Blue Tista Elite? I mean, I, I, just mind-blowing, the times we live in, but that's my shelf warmer pick. As far as hottest figure on the set, so we're going on the flip side of this, which figure from this set is going to be the hottest in the set. I went with King Harley Ray or Shawn Michaels. If I had to pick one, ha! Huh, I think if I had to pick one at the end of the day, I'd probably go with Shawn Michaels, but I feel like there's a lot of people that know how uh, sought after this Harley Race is, and people are going to be grabbing it up. You know, I, I think that is going to be the case here, but who knows? You know, you can never really... I talk about this all the time on the channel. You can never really estimate how the WWE aftermarket is going to shift. You never know, man. I mean, sometimes figures skyrocket in price and value, and some of them dip below the poverty line there. So, yeah, I, I, th I think I'd go with Harley Race, but I could see the Shawn Michaels being highly sought after as well, but... I mean, this set overall is pretty damn good, I'd say, and uh, having them in hand, I, I like them a lot in hand, but excitement level at the beginning was pretty mid, but uh, I mean, a lot of these figures have grown on me, but the, as far as the chase edition in this set, there is no chase, which is kind of cool, but it could have been awesome. Can you imagine, like, repainting one of these figures, you know, like, take the taker and, like, change the red to a certain color, or Shawn Michaels giving him different deco, or Batista giving him different deco, or even DDP, Seth Rollins giving it like Elite 45. It's the same figure except in white. I don't know, man. There's some cool things they could have done here, but there is no chase figure in the set. So typically we talk about the chase figure, 
There is no chase figure, Brad. Next up is the best head sculpt in the set. I went ultimately, there was a few options, but I went with Shawn Michaels. I just think this head sculpt's money. This is like one of my favorite Shawn head sculpts. I love the hair braid. I love the, the red beads that you got going in there. This figure is a beast, man. I'm so happy they put this figure in this line. It, it's such a it's such a great piece. I love this head sculpt. I thought Taker's head sculpt was solid. King Harley Race has a great head sculpt. Batista's redo. Seth Rollins' redo. I, th I thought there were some decent selections here for head sculpts in this set. Next up is the best articulation and at the end of the day there was really only two options here but I went with Seth Rollins. This guy can pretty much pose around with the best of them. If you own any Seth Rollins figures you know that but he's on ball joints. He has a very poseable figure here. He feels fantastic in the hand. It was between that and Shawn Michaels and both of these are really really poseable. They're really good. They're it, like it, it couldn't really fault it. I mean I guess technically you could go with Shawn because they're basically the exact same figure but Shawn Michaels doesn't have knee pads so you can actually bend the knees a little bit more. So Shawn Michaels actually may have won that spot. I think he may have the best articulation out of the set. But if you go on the flip side of the articulation on who has the worst, it's going to be The Undertaker, man. He has pine cone joints right here. Like, his leg is stiff. You can even hear it here. It's not the best. It, it's definitely stiff there which is a total thing, and his arms are a little bit loose there, but it's a solid figure overall. I still like this figure a lot, this Undertaker, but he's definitely the worst feeling in hand. He, he's a bit stiff around the edges. He's not going to pose around and put on five-star bangers like the rest of the set here, so I had, to, I had to call out Undertaker for the worst articulation in the set on the flip side of Shawn Michaels, but rounding out our My Damn Thoughts before we get into our ranking, we're getting into the best accessory in this set, and for our best accessory, it really, like, you really don't have a ton of great accessories. A lot of rubber stuff going on. I mean, this overthrow, the crown, DDP's vest, Batista's vest and hat. You have Shawn Michaels' entrance gear. A lot of rubber. No cloth in here, but it's probably because these are all older figures. And, you know, sometimes you get a lot of, you know, you don't get cloth as much as you do today back in the day. You know, there, there were some, uh, you know, there were some elite lines back in the day that did have some cloth in there. But for the most part, you do get rubber accessories. But for my best, I didn't even put it on screen because there's no point to. I went with either the WWE Championship that comes with Rollins or the Tag Team Championship that comes with Undertaker in the Hall of Champions set. That's really the only two accessories you can include. The Money in the Bank briefcase with Rollins would be cool, but it's way too damn big. It's not even in scale. Uh, you know, like, everything else is pretty eh. I mean, I like the entrance gear for Michaels. The vest specifically, not as big on the leg shackle deal, just because it's weird and it, it's stiff and you gotta buckle it together. And anytime you gotta buckle the rubber together, doesn't work very well. So, that is a whole deal there. But now that we have went through our whole criteria, man, let's rank this set from worst to best, in my own personal opinion. Now, before we rank this set, gotta run down the criteria for said ranking, as we always do. Let me adjust the camera a little bit here. Criteria for the ranking is excitement level for the figure, how's the figure feel in hand, likeness to the figure, how well does it pose around, head sculpt, does it portray the character from my television, lots of different things going into criteria for the ranking here, but let's run it down, man. Starting out at number six, and this figure actually shocked me a hell of a lot, but coming in at the bottom of the ranking for me personally was the DDP figure. I just, I did, like, this figure's nostalgic for me, and I, I like DDP a lot. It's just not a figure that I really was that excited for. I didn't think it really belonged here, and I don't know. It's just not my favorite figure. It's not my favorite look of DDP, my favorite era of DDP, but I don't know. It's, it's a solid figure. It's solid. It's just not my favorite, so he comes in at the bottom. Not that I really have any, like, just hatred for the figure. I just, it's my least favorite, I think, out of the set. Coming in at number five, we have the Blutista. Similar reasons to DDP. It's not really that the figure's bad. I just think that the rest of the figures in the set are better. You know, I'd rather have the other figures in the set. And sometimes that's what it comes down to in these rankings. Coming in at number four, we have The Undertaker. Really like the updates they did to this figure. Updated head sculpt, double jointed arms. You got bigger arms here. Very beautiful figure. Just not the top of the top for me in this set. I think it is a solid figure overall. I enjoy the figure, but it's not going to quite crack into the top three. Which is actually where this may shock a lot of you, but it's going to be the Seth Rollins. Now, this is what I'm saying, okay? I know we're all disappointed in a lot of things about the figure, okay? That makes sense to me. However, even though it's not what we expected, it's still a damn good figure, you know what I mean? Like, could it be better in a lot of ways as far as updating a Seth Rollins Elite to the modern formula? Yes. Is it perfect by any means? No. Could we fix it up a lot? Yes, we could. But is in terms of all the criteria, for the most part, it still clears a lot of them. 
And I, like, this is one of my favorite Elise Mattel's ever done, re-released. So, you have to take that into consideration. I did dock it because of the inaccuracies, but I still think I'd rather have it over these other three. I don't know, man. Just uh, stuff to think about, for sure. But coming in at number two and number one, we have Harley Race and Shawn Michaels. So, who is coming in at number two and number one? At number two, I went with King Harley Race. Very damn good figure, man. I'm actually really intrigued with that figure. And then we have Shawn Michaels at the top. I just think overall, at the end of the day, I think I'd rather have the Shawn over the rest of them. And I think that's what got him the number one spot. But this Shawn Michaels figure is so good. This Harley Race is one of the most underrated figures probably ever. I know that everybody like is super sought after. But if you see that figure in person, man, you gotta buy it. And you want to know what's wild to me? Is this Greatest Hits Wave is probably so genius for Mattel because I remember seeing a WrestleMania shipper full of Greatest Hits Elites, and they were all gone the next time I went back to the store, man. And it, there was like 15 or 16 Elites there. Just completely wiped them out. And so I think that these waves are going to do really, really good. And I think that they they have done a genius move here re-releasing these figures, man. I'm really excited for Series 3. I know Rock, Rocky Maivia from the Target exclusive way, way back in like 2015 or something like that is going to be in Series 3 more than likely. And I can't wait to see who else comes in the Greatest Hits series. I hope it's some figures that either I don't have or I missed out on. And I hope that it's some good entries like we had in Series 2 right here. But that is going to wrap up my My Damn Thoughts episode 4, WWE Elite Greatest Hits Series 2. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I would love to know where you guys stand on all these figures down in the comment section below. Before we get out of here, huge shout out to our patron army, the MDT Patreon. Check out the link in the description below if you guys are interested in stuff like that. We're giving away an Elite 90 Randy Orton this month on the Patreon, so definitely go check that out. But that is going to wrap up My Damn Thoughts. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy. Leave me your thoughts down below. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at My Damn Toys. Pro Wrestling T slash My Damn Toys for some merch. I'm getting out of here. Have a blessed day. I'll see you guys next time. We'll never be